Hello everyone and welcome to scaria.com. Today's topic on rheumatology is spondo spondyloarthritis. Now let's get on with it. Now spondyloarthritis are a very specific group of diseases which are usually uh, clumped together because they have a common symptomology or to speak in a rather medical term there are a group of overlapping disorders which share certain clinical features and genetic associations now both of those terms are very important because they do not have much in common among all of these diseases except that there is some clinical features that overlap each others and there is some genetic variations and commonalities among all of them and that being one the HLA-B27 which will be discussed in much detail further down the lecture. Now let's talk about what are spondyloarthritis. Now these are usually can be expressed as ankylosing, uh, ankylosing spondylitis. Now this is the most common spondyloarthritis. It is found in about 40% of all the patients with spondyloarthritis, and it is the one that is usually uh, found in both the white population and in the Asian population. Another one is the reactive arthritis. Now reactive arthritis is usually a complication of an already um, complex or severe uh, bacterial infection. So reactive arthritis being a complication is clumped in these kind of uh, rheumatological disorders because it presents the same type of symptomologies that others have. Now why they do so that we will discuss further. Uh, next are the psoriatic arthritis and spondylitis or simply psoriatic uh, spondyloarthritis. Now this one is uh, spondyloarthritis which is associated with psoriasis in patients. Next is the enteropathic arthritis and spondylitis. Now this is a specific one which is usually associated with patients with both arthritis, spondylitis and some kind of inflammatory bowel disease. Next, we have the juvenile onset spondyloarthritis. Now, juvenile onset uh, spondyloarthritis used to be uh, not among the group of the spondyloarthritis, but in recent surveys, it has been added to the text in the textbooks because uh, in juvenile onset during the age of childhood, usually the symptomology is not complete. Sometimes it overlaps and sometimes it doesn't even uh, stay um, at one place. It keeps repeating in an asymmetrical fashion. So because of these kind of peculiarities with the juvenile onset when spondyloarthritis occurs at a young age, uh, juvenile spondyloarthritis has been created as a separate entity. Next is the undifferentiated spondyloarthritis. Now usually undifferentiated and juvenile spondyloarthritis are usually clumped together because they usually happen at the same time. But again, juvenile uh, spondyloarthritis is recognized by its onset, the age at which the symptoms appear, while undifferentiated is uh, defined by its, the uh, ability of the lesions do not uh, complete their course of pathogenesis. Now, there's a certain term known as the seronegative spondyloarthritis. Now, seronegative means that there is something missing in the blood or the serum of the blood. Now, we all know that rheumatoid arthritis is a very severe disease with a huge amount of both uh, epidemiological and etiological implications. And this disease, the rheumatoid arthritis, must be differentiated from other diseases 
such as spondyloarthritis because they both share same symptoms and symptoms sometimes overlap so a seronegative spondyloarthritis is the one which does not have the rheumatoid factor which is again present in rheumatoid arthritis and it does not have any kind of citrullinated peptides which are again present in the rheumatoid arthritis and the most common citrullinated peptide is the CCP or the cyclic citrullinated peptide or any antibody against this peptide is very common in rheumatoid arthritis but both of these the rheumatoid factor and the anti CCP are not found in the normal or the seropositive spondyloarthritis and this lecture is solely on the seropositive spondyloarthritis now these seronegative spondyloarthritis are can be easily remembered by the mnemonic peru now this peru can be both used as a mnemonic and can also be used as um, to remember both the cluster that from their severity to their uh, complication and can also be rem remembered as a easy way to remember all of the seropositive spondyloarthritis now for the p it stands for the psoriatic arthritis e stands for the enteropathic a for the enclosing spondylitis r for the reactive spondylitis and u for the undifferentiated spondylitis these are the same five which we discussed earlier but presented as a mnemonic